actually, you know, you are talking of a long period of time. You know, we started. We are celebrating the 20th anniversary of, of the first Inan case uh, this year. So I have many, many vivid memories. But uh, if I wanted to keep one of them, the, the best one, if I can say, was certainly the, the first implantation, the first Inan case, was as something that uh, will uh, stay in my memories forever. You know, because uh, we were dealing with um, very severely sick patients. You know, he was dying. He was very young. He was 57 years of age, and uh, he had almost uh, all the contraindications that we observe today for doing the procedure. So it was a very, very challenging case, and also it was the very first one. You know, after uh, 10 years of research, so it was a, a great frontier. You know, to get uh, to get across, and uh, my uh, vivid memories, as you say, was the. Uh, the reaction uh, that we could observe on these patients after the valve was implanted. You know, it was implanted with a very difficult technique, going a transeptal, something that is not done today, but we, we, were, we were pushing the device from the femoral vein, you know, crossing the septum and so on. So it was a technically extremely challenging as well. And when the valve was opened, finally, by Elena Chaninov, who inflated for the first time in the world the balloon, you know, to, to deploy a valve, the, the reaction that we could observe was uh, absolutely uh, instantaneous and absolutely amazing for everyone in the, in the laboratory. You know, first of all, we, uh, we could observe immediately the improvement of the hemodynamics of the patient. You know, the, the, for example, the aortic pressure rise, rise to, uh, to normal. And uh, I could, uh, I could uh, interrupt the uh, vasopressor treatment immediately. You know? So this was fascinating. You know? the, there was no, no residual gradient uh, at all between the left ventricle and the, and the aorta. And, but the, the most important uh, feature was the, the change in the patient uh, physical aspect. You know? Because immediately uh, it turned from uh, uh, black color to gray color to pink color. You know? the, his face was colored again. And uh, this patient who had several episodes of cardiac arrest, he was uh, smiling and uh, he was uh, thanking us for uh, what we had been uh, doing. And uh, the most uh, striking thing was that uh, uh, two years later, uh, in his room, uh, we were drinking champagne with him. You know, this man was almost dead when we did the procedure. So this is a vivid memory that uh, everyone, not only me, will keep in mind forever. Actually, you are talking about the hurdles on my way, and uh, there were a number, you know, in uh, an adventure of 20 years, you know, and uh, uh, when uh, in medicine, when you come with a new project, almost always, uh, you have the whole world against you because people think that uh, if uh, the, the crazy idea that you are trying to promote uh, was possible, uh, it would already exist, you know. So there is a skepticism which is absolutely uh, unavoidable for each uh, new technology in medicine. So on my way, uh, I had to uh, to go through the skepticism mainly of, of the cardiac surgeons. It was extremely tough, you know. The, the surgeons was uh, very much against the idea of uh, uh, TAVI or TAVAR. Uh, because they, uh, they had a number of arguments, you know, the, the fact that, for example, uh, the valve would never have been able to cross a calcific native valve, that the stent would never be able to be expanded, that if ever it could be done, the results would be extremely low and uh, uh, not comparable to the surgical valves. Uh, the, the, they were listing a number of complications unbelievable, you know, and, uh, and especially uh, the fact that we would destroy the uh, adjoining structures uh, just above the coronary artery, just below the mitral valve and the east bundle and so on, uh, that uh, it, it, when in any way uh, we will kill the patient, you know, even immediately or after a short few days for endocarditis, mi migration of the device and so on. So uh, this was... Uh, so strong that during five years I was absolutely unable uh, to get any support of companies you know, to develop the project in which I was very strongly believing. Because I had shown, uh, doing uh, with my colleagues Elena Chaninov and uh, some other in my place, uh, stent implantation in calcific aortic stenosis of patients who died of the disease, that uh, we had enough room to place a stent without destroying the adjoining structure, and that the stent was uh, very, uh, very strongly anchored inside the calcific native valve, that the risk of embolization of the device was very low, and so on. 
So I couldn't find anything, any, any support from the companies, and this is why I was very surprised after five years when I was, uh, I must say, quite discouraged you know, uh, to, uh, to meet on my way uh, two engineers from uh, Johnson & Johnson, uh, Stan Rabinovich and Stan Rowe, and uh, one cardiologist uh, from the United States, Martin Leon, who is a big name, and uh, three of them were, were very much believers in the project and very supportive. And uh, with uh, all the, these people, we, uh, we could uh, create a startup company and uh, find a, a partner in Israel to build the device and so on. And uh, my problem was gone with the concept. So then after that, uh, the, there was still a lot of criticism after the first cases. It's unbelievable, you know, we had been doing uh, 40 cases. Uh, on compassionate basis in the Department of Cardiology and when I was presenting the results, the surgeons uh, were again saying that I was uh, more or less a liar and uh, they were very much insulting, you know, in meetings when I, when I was showing the results. Uh, it was fascinating because uh, we had patients who did survive already uh, one or two years and they, they still st were saying that it couldn't work. And actually the, the, the all uh, problem was relieved when the surgeons themselves showed that they could implant a valve using another minimally invasive technique, the transapical approach. And when they, they, they could consider that they, they, they were able to be involved in, uh, in this uh, technology, uh, it was the end of my problems. But you know, when you, you meet this amount of hurdles, you, you have to be very courageous and never give up. You know, you, you have to uh, continue and to defend your idea and your project against the, 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 the world of skepticism and uh, negative opinion. Well, actually, uh, you know, uh, the, the indication of TAVI is clear. You know, all the patients uh, who, have, who are good candidates for having the trans femoral approach uh, above the age of 75 now are accepted to have TAVI. So uh, the, uh, we know exactly where we, where we are going. You know, this population is very important. You know, for example, in uh, 2005, for example, we are thinking about having 300,000 cases on the single year. You know, the, the inc incremental uh, number of patients included in all registries and studies and so on is on the range of four to ten percent additional patients uh, uh, each year. So uh, the, uh, the amount of patients is increasing but the indications are also increasing. So for example today uh, we have many studies that would be uh, presented at this meeting for example on uh, cases that we are not including now in the, in the, in the studies. For example, patients with uh, less severe uh, aortic stenosis, uh, but heart failure, you know, so this is another category of patients. Uh, we have also patients who are asymptomatic, you know, without any symptoms, but having a severe aortic stenosis and many other uh, subgroup of patients uh, that, are, that will again increase the number of uh, TAVI cases done every year. And uh, we are uh, many studies ongoing, for example, on the bicuspid valve, you know, including younger patients, who are also another category of patients that we know will be also included in the coming years uh, quite an, on a routine basis. So um, many, many additional indications than uh, the, the patients already uh, that we use already for, uh, for TAVI, like uh, patients highly symptomatic, you know, with, uh, with uh, severe uh, aortic uh, uh, stenosis. Yes, concerning the young cardiologists, I would uh, certainly um, encourage them uh, to get on board, you know, and to, uh, to learn the technique of TAVI as far as they have some uh, enough experience in uh, regular interventional cardiology techniques like uh, cornea angioplasty, for example, stent implantations. You cannot start uh, with no experience at all. You know, TAVI is something, a technology which looks like uh, easy when you observe it on the screen, but actually it's a succession of details uh, the, and each detail is absolutely crucial. So you have to learn the technique very cautiously. And uh, for the young cardiologists, I would say, uh, never forget to put the patient at the center of your uh, concern. This is extremely important. Never try to demonstrate that you are the best in the world and that you, you can, uh, you can uh, do TAVI on uh, very challenging cases, like uh, putting the life of the patient in danger. So for that, you know, uh, they, uh, I would put the, the, 
I, I would push the, the young cardiologists to, uh, to follow the, uh, the, the training program that do exist today in the world. You know, they, they can get trained in a special tra training sessions that, uh, like uh, the one that we have in Rouen, it's not the only one, but they can come and observe cases, work on simulators, for example, this is very important, you know, to just uh, uh, learn how to handle the devices and to prepare the valve and so on. And uh, so uh, they have to take their time, you, they have to be uh, proctored by uh, experienced uh, teacher, you know, when they start their experience, but uh, uh, they, again, you know, I am... Uh, there is no technique which is much rewarding than TAVI, you know, much more than the coronary angioplasty and so on. And I think that uh, all the young investigators, all the young interventional cardiologists should be very much interested to get on board.